Alright, we're back on sports, and you know what, I told y'all last week there were some local things I wanted to talk about, and you know what, we're going to get into that, because this week, it's a lot of fuckery this week, it really is, especially in the local scene. So before I get started with the other local things that I'm going to show you today, alright, before we get to the professional side, alright, we need to talk about what happened last week, that's right, I'm revisiting last week. Now, for those who know, I did the Philadelphia Marathon. Now, of course, I completed the Philadelphia Marathon, I actually did more than the Philadelphia Marathon, as I explained last week. However, there has been an article, which I'll put in the description field in this video, has come out not too long ago, stating that, hey, there's a lot of people who cheated during this Philadelphia Marathon, right? And it's not just they just cheated. They're repeat offenders of cheating. So let's talk about this, all right? Apparently, roughly around 200 runners decided to cut the course during the Philadelphia Marathon. Uh, they said that one person, literally one person, it took them three hours to run the first half of the course, but then the second half, it took them 20 minutes. Now, look, look, all right? You've got to be kidding me that this is something. And then the writer goes on to say maybe the person just bailed out. They're, they're assuming that they've just bailed out. However, because they decided to bail out, they still crossed the finish line, they still got their damn medal, they are still in first place for their age bracket. So, no, there's, some, there's something wrong there. But if 200 people cut the course, and they're repeat offenders, that's me, that means last year, because the writer did the research, they found the same people who were celebrating this year, tracked them by their number and name, found pictures of them. That's right, last year they did it too. So my question is, number one, what's the point of doing the run if you're just going to quit? Or I shouldn't even say quit, but to cheat. What's that? I mean, seriously. I mean, let's be honest here. If 200 people, look, if 200 people decide to cut the course and they're all saying that they're injured, that means there would be a lot of paramedics on deck. And they're, no, no, that didn't happen. Okay? So, you're sitting here and telling me you're cutting courses and then you're going to celebrate like you finished the marathon. When you didn't. That's absolutely ridiculous. You did a half marathon, if that, you know what I mean? Some people did the half, but then, listen, I remember, look, I play this. When you get to about, if you're going to cut the course, if there's a, a way to cut the course, I didn't see a way to either, I mean, even cut the course, till possibly about maybe 14, 15 miles in, all right, when you come around the art museum. When you come around the art museum, you go down Bowhouse Row, and that's when you can see all the other people who already completed that part coming back up, because when you come down, they're coming the opposite way. So you can cut the course. So that, that had to be where it happened, okay? That had to be. Because the person in the article cites that the mats that are down, the electronic mats that catch your bib number, your timing and all that, some of them, they, yeah, it's just they just completely missed. Now, it does say, it does, um, for people who were really last, like dead last, some of the mats were pulled up. So you have to take that in consideration because of how slow they were being. That's different. You know what I mean? But for people who were running a specific pace, and then all of a sudden, you're skipping all types of mats, you get to the, say, 15-mile mark. All of a sudden... You're at the 21 mile mark or 22 mile mark. You skip all those electronic mats. They're going to catch you. They're going to catch you. All right. So you can't be you, you can't be serious that we have people who are doing this. It's absolutely ridiculous. What's the point of you running the marathon, and signing up for the marathon, training, and then saying I'm just going to cut? It, I'm going to shortcut it. What's the point? How can you be proud of that? I don't understand it. But like I said, there's more to this apparently because they're going to be writing. Uh, was it? You know, people in charge. Like I said, these are repeat offenders. These are not, so, so this is not someone who just said, okay, I'm, I'm going to take on the marathon, can't do it, cut the course, even though it's still cheating their first time. No, these are people who did it as well last year. Why aren't these people banned? What's the point? And of course, it doesn't have to be for competition, but you're sending the wrong message about perseverance. So what's the point? You're earning something, well, technically you're not earning something, you're getting a medal that you did not earn. And if, for those who don't know, already, if you look on eBay, people who won their, um, who, who, sorry, won, who did the marathon, they're already selling their medals on eBay for money. So then we have another, you know, case of people who buy medals, right, and then act like they did something. You notice every time when I do these runs or whatever, I make sure I take a picture of the medal at the place, or, you know, someone takes a picture of me at the place, or, uh, you know, I mean, afterwards at home or whatever, so you can get a close-up view of it and stuff like that. I make sure because of proof. And I still have the, uh, the also the stock uh, stock photos, the, the, the photo, race photos that, you know, their photographers take as well. So it goes to show you that there's people out there who will act like they're doing something, and they're actually being frauds about it. Overrunning 
Seriously, overrunning. This this is what we do now. Overrunning. Okay. But yes. But also, apparently, there's a big uh, issue here. And it's an investigation, obviously. But um, was there's a big issue here also of people who are encouraging others to run with, their, with others' bibs. And we know you're not allowed to do that. There's a reason why they have, you know, well, if I can't run and I'm going to give my bib to someone else, you know, you, there's a swap. There's, there's a, a way to go about that. You know what I mean? You just don't run with someone else's bib. You don't do that. Anyways. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on. Let's talk about what's going on still here locally in Philadelphia. And I do not understand this at all. Apparently, within all the problems that we have in Philadelphia and trying to keep kids off the streets and stuff, now we have a new facility opening. That's right. And if you thought axe throwing, remember that? Axe throwing was a big deal. Now we got sword fighting. Bruh. Are you fucking kidding? No, look, look, no, we gotta have this talk. No, I'm sorry, but we need to have this fucking talk, alright? You can't sit here and tell me that this is okay. Now, before I get started on my opinion of this, let me explain where this area is at. This is in Harrogate, alright? In Kensington. Now, mind you, Harrogate is a pretty rough area. It's nothing but guns, drugs, fighting, and strip clubs. That's what it is, okay? We've had this talk before about you know, axe throwing competitions and stuff, you know, because that's what it is, and this is going to lead right into it, okay? So this area is predominantly, if there's any fighting going on, is boxing. That's the culture there, boxing. Now, for those who have not been to Harrogate or in Kensington, there's two top spots that you should know in Kensington that's boxing, okay? One is Rock Ministry Boxing, on the other side is Harrogate, Harrogate Gym, boxing, all right? If you're not knowing those, one of those two spots and you don't know who you are, uh, you need to do more work then. You need to do more work. You need to go introduce yourself, all right? The fact is, these are the two top spots. This is what's dominant there, okay? Kensington, that's all it's about. Boxing, you know what I mean? Like I said, you're going to have your guns, your drugs, your strip clubs. You're going to have your crackheads on the corner. That's what they do, especially down in, uh, was it, not just Kensington, Allegheny, but Kensington, Somerset. So it goes to show you that these type of things happen. Now, with that said, with this business, this is how I envisioned how this was being built when I saw it, Okay? The owner who thought, you know, they had that dream, they're just sitting there, they're like, the guns, the drugs, the shooting, the strip clubs. I got, a, I got a good answer. I know where I can put here. I know exactly what this needs, this area needs. It needs sword fighting. Yeah. Like, come on. Come the fuck on. This is what happens when people have too much money and don't know what the fuck to do. This is what happens when people have, you know, the means to create something, but not look at the area and see what they need, okay? Now, we saw this before. We talked, I just talked about that too long ago, about the axe throwing. I want to talk about this because Northern Liberties, y'all know by now, Northern Liberties has been fished down, has been taken over by hipsters. Gentrification out the ass, okay? All those people that live there, gone now because the hipsters need a place to be. They didn't want to stay in the suburbs and they wanted to taste the city life, but don't go, don't go to the suburbs because they don't want your ass up there. No, they'll tell you real quick, we don't want you here. But they want to come down and take whatever, you know, we have. Now, with that said, okay, in the previous three years, we've seen them transform uh, Port Richmond. Not just Port, no, they're moving up to Port Richmond, sorry, Northern Liberties, all right? We've seen them transfer, uh, you know, transform that, right? So they raised the property tax. The people who lived there had to move. They had to move up forward because they can't live in the city because they can't afford to live in Center City, all right, unless you skip Center City and try to go down to South, uh, South uh, was it, down to South, uh, was it South Philly or Southwest, which is even more dangerous, all right? But they end up moving north, right? So, as we know, Northern Liberties has turned into this huge spot where it's nothing but gastro pubs now and all this other crap, okay? Mind you, they took the, was it the street hockey uh, venue? They, mind you, they're moving up into Port Richmond. They took the street, the, the, the only street hockey area that the kids had, and they turned that into bike polo. We talked about I showed you that on video, okay? So you have that. Now, we have them trying to cross over to the border into Kensington and try to use fucking sword fighting. Fucking serious. So again, this is not about doing something for the community. Because remember, last time they did the, uh, the axe throwing, they tried to say, well, we just want to give back to the community. It's not giving back to the community if you're not asking the community or looking at what the community needs. It's what you want so that you can take it the fuck over. That's what it is. And that's why people are so pissed off when it comes to gentrification. Because you're coming in, taking what's theirs, like I said before, we can't come to the suburbs because you don't want us there. You made it very well known you don't want us there, okay? But now you want to come down and take the shit with ours. And then those people who can't, you know, can't live there anymore, they move up into the Northeast. And now you have people in the Northeast. I wonder why the Northeast is getting so bad. Because all the people who live down there are starting to move up. It's amazing. 
isn't it? Because they say, so bad. As if all these people just moved up there and all of a sudden started crying all over the place all of a sudden, right? Right? So bad. Yeah, we know what that means. So it goes to show you that this is the type of shit that happens. And it seems like nobody wants to speak on the issue. I find it very funny that every time I come out here and do this shit, all you so-called die-hard Philly dudes who want to get on camera and talk your shit, y'all don't ever talk about this type of shit. Ever. Ever. I don't understand it. But there's more. Just to show you how bad this shit is, all right? How cringeworthy this shit is. How they tried to fit it into the community. They have YouTube videos, which it seems like nobody watches. They have, video, they have YouTube videos, and I find it funny that, you know, having your bachelor party there. Fucking serious? Your fucking bachelor party? Get the fuck out. Who's having, who's having a bachelor party there? Who's having a Fun for everyone. Bachelor party. Okay, right, right. But like I said, to show you how cringeworthy it is, okay? I want to show you exactly what it looks like on the inside. This is a screenshot, because I'm not going to show you the video, because fuck that video. But I'll show you a screenshot of what it looks like inside. You've got to be fucking kidding. Look, man, look. Nothing says graffiti in the area like sword fighting right in front of graffiti. Like, are you fucking serious? Are you fucking... It's almost like... Uh, like, seriously, this is how I see it. You could have just simply, if you wanted to make something for the community or do something like that, all you had to do was just make a gym to keep kids off the street. You got the means to do it. Why couldn't you just do that? Hmm? Instead, you want to make some bullshit up that's going to fail. Like, I can't... Imagine people in that area coming from the strip club like, yeah, we just saw all those chicks, man. You know what I feel like doing now? I feel like sword fighting. Like, what? Like, can you, nah, nah, stop. Stop this. Just stop all of this, all right? It's a fucking joke. It is. It's an absolute joke. You can't tell me that this is okay, and it's not. But these are the type of things that's going on. I know that some people are going to say, well, you know, they have the money, they got the contracts, or they rent out whatever, they have the means to put up whatever they want there. And I'm okay, I understand that. People have their own dreams, and they want to do that. But here's the thing, all right? Every time a place like this opens up, they always cite, always cite that they're doing it for the community. That's their way of giving back. And it's not. It's not at all. Like I said, they already gentrified Northern Liberties with all their, you know, stupid-ass hipsters there. You notice everything there now... No one really, no one really, like, people who used to, no one goes over there anymore. No one can afford that shit. Like I said, you got bike shops there where the bikes are like $1,000 each. Can't nobody in that area afford that shit other than the hipsters. No one. It's bad enough we just had this, this discussion not too long ago. Even ESPN tried to have this discussion where the, the kids in the inner cities and these type of neighborhoods, they can't even get baseball teams together because they can't afford baseball. And I said, actually, that's wrong because I, and I've showed before that in those fields, when, I take, when I'm you know, on the weekend, I'm taking pictures and stuff, we have baseball teams out there. There's not a lot of them, but we do have baseball teams out there, mostly football and basketball. And basketball is more uh, popular because you only need one ball, you know what I mean? And, you know, and everyone can share same thing with uh, soccer. It's getting bigger now. So it's like you only need one ball. That's all you need. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's very cost effective at this point. So for anyone to think that these type of people in this area, where if it's a big problem, where they can't afford equipment because of sports, and you're bringing on axe throwing, and you're bringing in $1,000 bike shops, and you're bringing in sword fighting, what the fuck would you... Come on, man. Come on. This is the shit I'm talking about. This is why I hope this shit fails. I really do. I really do. Because of all this shit you could have thought about for the community, this is what you decided. This. This, this, this bullshit. Okay. Anyways. Let's move on to more uh, community issues. Let's talk about the Philadelphia Eagles real quick. As you know, the Philadelphia Eagles, they beat the Chicago Bears. They just beat the Chicago Bears. They destroyed the Chicago Bears. And even some of you uh, Chicago Bears fans, even, you know, contacted me on Twitter and was apologizing for your team playing so bad because you called it a glorified scrimmage. That's what you called it. So, <laughs> which I, it's kind of funny. But um, for what we saw during this game, actually it wasn't even during the game, it was during the tailgate out in the parking lot. What we saw with Eagles fans had to be some of the scummiest shit I've seen in a long time. And it's interesting that we've seen people who want to use this type of stuff for, um, for attention, but also not say anything about it. So let's talk about this picture real quick. And this is why, just to let you know, Philly fans, this is why nobody respects Philadelphia. This is why nobody wants Philadelphia to win a Super Bowl. Because of ignorance like this. Now, let me say this quickly, alright? When this picture surfaced, 
a lot of Eagles fans was like, take this the fuck down. Take it down. You should be ashamed of yourself for posting this on Twitter. And of course, the person who posted it was like, it's not that I agree with it. I'm just showing you I didn't make it and blah, blah, and gave you every excuse in the book but to take it down. Why? Because it was too busy getting a lot of retweets and likes. And because he saw that, he was like, nah, I'm not taking it down. Because I'm getting attention. Being an attention whore. That's what it is. The banner itself is already an attention whore enough. And wrong, just to let you know. Okay? But, the person who posted this is an attention whore themselves. Now, with that said, let's get in some facts if you need to know about the murder right here in Philadelphia and in Chicago, just to let you know. And if you want, I will put the description in the description field, I'll put the actual murder rates, you know, so you see it yourself, in the top 30 if you want. Chicago is number 25, all right, in the country, in murder rates. Philadelphia, 24. So for you to tell Chicago, stick the murder and we'll stick the football, motherfucker, you know, you're only one below them. So for you to say some ignorant shit like that is ridiculous. See, and here's the thing. Instead of doing the right thing, instead of just taking a picture or whatever and trying to get, you know, views off it, why don't you tell them to take it the fuck down? Matter of fact, why don't you tell someone in charge, security, whatever, tell them to take this ignorant shit the fuck down because it makes us look all fucking bad. And guess what? This shit has nothing to do with fucking football. Nothing. The topic that you decide to pick has nothing to do with football. And all those people who were killed... You just, just piss all over them, huh? Okay, that's what we do now. In Philadelphia. I'm telling you now, you can tell whoever wrote this had... They don't even live... They, they, they don't live in Philadelphia. They don't. They can't. They can't. That's absolutely ridiculous. They must live somewhere on the main line up in the suburbs somewhere. Where they're not in the fucking city. Because you know a lot of you, you, you come down in the city and you do that shit too. You come from Jersey. You come from fucking main line. You come from their Conshohocken and all those other places. Uh, and media and all them. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an Eagles fan. But yeah, like I said, once again, these are the same people who don't want you up in the suburbs anyway. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not trying to fucking hear it. You're not going to see somebody from North Philly saying this. Nah. You're not going to see someone Southwest saying this. Nah. You, you, you be, you be even, it'd be even a shock if someone from South Philly said this because we know how bad South Philly is. You know, once you get past Queens Village because they gentrified that shit too. Anyways, you have to be kidding me that this is something that was, you know... That was actually put out there. And like I said, majority that I saw online of Eagles fans were very upset about this. And they did not they did not agree with it. They wanted it taken down. The person who tweeted, they wanted him to delete that tweet. He wouldn't delete it because, of course, you know, he was getting too much attention. So it goes to show you that is something that easily, easily is absolutely wrong. And this is another reason why. And I find it funny that, again, the fucking media, they didn't cover this. They didn't cover it. No. Because everything has to be sunshine and rainbows now when it comes to Philadelphia. There's the same media that did not give a shit about you to begin with. And you know what? Let's get into You know what? I'm going to skip the Chelsea game this week because I was very disappointed in them. We're going to get to the Griffin Force flop of the week, all right? Because we're still talking about Philadelphia. Griffin Force flop of the week goes to Joel Embiid. That's right. For his fucking flopping. I need you to Y'all need to see this. Tell me again why I should support this shit. Now he's going to the top. He gets it smacked against the backboard. And look at this. Come on. Like that's going to do anything. <laughs> Just when this game is becoming perfunctory, I was Joel about. Embiid livens up the proceedings. Look at him. So that's what we cheer now. That softness. And you see all those people? Oh, they're getting up. And he's, yeah, yeah. He's proud. A flop, and it's not just the block, because if you did it after the block, okay, cool, because that's what players do, you know what I mean? They, they get in each other's faces, they talk, they do whatever. I'm cool with that, but once you take that flop, and that's a hard flop, you can't even tell, there's no way. Look, even if you're the commentators, come on, come on, you know better than this, you know what I mean? But gets up and starts cheering and smiling about it. Mind you, this is the same Embiid who just said in the beginning of the season, not only is he not going to play every game, but he needs to stop flopping. Meaning he's soft. He fucking soft. So you can't sit here and tell me that I'm supposed to cheer on this type of softness. No way. So, Sixers fans, I need to understand why you're just going to, you know, just disregard all of this that you've been seeing throughout these couple of years. I'm just wondering. Because even Kyle Korver says that, but we'll get in that in a minute, okay? You have to understand, after Embiid decided to flop, the media, only telling you half of what's going on, wants to praise Embiid. For his flop, mind you, they leave the flop part out. 
if that was anyone the fuck else who pulled that, y'all would be all over that dude because of the flopping and everything. Because we know it's not just Embiid. Flopping in the NBA in general is looked down on. We know that. But now we can cheer it on because we can make exceptions. It's such bullshit if you haven't realized. And the media, like I said, they're just going to keep scooping it to you. This is how they're going to feed it to you and hope that you fall in line about your sheep. And the thing is, Mark Zumoff, you know, they, they, they literally said this not too long ago. I told you before they said this. The bandwagon is filling up. Quick. They've said, they acknowledge that you're a bunch of fucking bandwagoners. All right? So Sixers fans, I'm wondering, do you not give a shit about basketball? Is this really just about winning? Because if it's about winning, then you're not a fucking fan. Alright? If this is about basketball, then you shouldn't be okay with this at all. Alright? Now, here's the thing. A lot of people like to jump all over me for my opinions of the Sixers and everything. And I keep telling you, it's not about just the way they're winning. It's, it's a fucking circus. What you're seeing is a circus. Between the media, between the way they play, between, everything is a circus right now. It's entertainment. That's all it is. It's not basketball. It's entertainment. That's what they're selling you on. Alright? It's a circus. And I'm tired of seeing this circus. Because that's what it is. These are the same fans before you say, well, basketball's supposed to be entertaining, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. No. Let's stop right now. Because you're the same people who will be quick to say, well, the regular season doesn't matter, and it's all about the playoffs. And we just saw that not too long ago. Because remember, Adam Silver said himself, nobody's watching the regular season. You know what I mean? Now we got to get them to watch at least the last two minutes of the game if it's tight and make and charge them X amount of money. Remember, we saw this over the summer. Adam Silver himself came out and said this. Nobody's watching the regular season. NBA fans say it all the time. The regular season means nothing. So if the regular season means nothing, and now the Sixers are winning, and now you're running over there to it, I thought the regular season meant nothing, fam. So when they win, you run around and, yeah, yeah, we won, we won. But the regular season means nothing, right? That's what you quick to say. A bunch of fucking hypocrites. That's what it is. But there's more. Last night, the Sixers got destroyed by the Cavaliers, right? And I want you to hear exactly what Kyle Korver has to say. He chooses words very carefully so that he doesn't piss off the Philadelphia fan base. Because, you know, Kyle Korver used to play here himself. So, remember, they tried to make him the leader at one point, and it didn't work out. So listen to Kyle Korver, what he has to say about the Philadelphia fans. Is it really a credit to the city and the fans really sticking is. with this whole process? You know what, there's not many places uh, where you, you could do this, you know, and the fans would stay behind the team and, and almost kind of cheer the process of it. You know, there's there's not really nowhere else in America where you could do this. And I think, uh, um, yeah, they're, they are they are seeing uh, the rewards of, or they're reaping the rewards of, of their patience. And, uh, it's good to see. You are absolutely right, Kyle Korver. Nowhere else in America could you do something like this. You want to know why? Because other fan bases wouldn't put up with this shit. That's why. But apparently, Philadelphia were so starved, I swear to God, when you're cheering over 28 wins in a fucking season, that, that, that should tell you something. And to say, well, we stuck by the process. Now we're reaping the rewards of everything. And he says this right after you beat us by, what, 20-something points? You gotta be fucking kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. This is, it's an absolute joke. Even Dwayne Wade was like, the Sixers made a, a statement tonight, and they're coming. They lost by 20 against you. What you mean they made a statement? So it, it goes to show you that, once again, that this shit that we see is, it's pandering. It's coddling. And you can tell, and sometimes, it's fucking sarcastic. It is. And you, you don't see, I mean, seriously, if you look, if you read of what he's saying, like I said, Kyle Corver's been here. He knows how the fans are. All right, and he know when he was trying to be branded as a leader, and he failed. You know, he left. That was it. But he got a ton of money when he was here. All right. So for them to say we're reaping the rewards, we haven't done anything. We haven't done anything. Has people not realize this yet. We are only X amount of games into the season. We are not even in December yet. Do you understand that we have done nothing? We haven't made a mark on anyone yet, and yet you're going to sit here and say we're reaping. The rewards. What the fuck is going on in this city that people are buying into this bullshit? But there's more. That's right. So it's a fucking circus at this point. It's a circus. And if you don't believe me, now that you've seen that video, I want you to see John Clark, who is an absolute idiot too in the media, all right, tries to turn this into a positive thing. That's right, on Twitter. 
Do you see that spin? He took exactly what Kyle Corver just said, which I explained to you, about how you couldn't do this anywhere else in America, and he tried to turn it into a positive. He literally took what he said as face value and tried to say, hey, you know, this is cool. Trust the process and fire, fire, fire and all this other kind of... Are you serious? And guess what? When he said that, fans who actually watched the game weren't very happy about it. I'm glad to see that I'm not the only person who sees this bullshit for what it is. Who sees it's a fucking circus. Who sees that, again, where, where's fault? Oh, he's hurt? Okay, yeah. Look, people, understand this very, very quickly, okay? This team hasn't done shit. Right now, we are a half a decade into this bullshit. And you're quick to cheer on anything that happens. It's almost like you don't watch basketball. Every time you see something, I'm thinking to myself, well, I just saw that six times on the court earlier today. The fuck are they cheering about? You know what I mean? On TV. Because someone else did it. It, it, it. it makes me feel as though you don't play basketball. So when you see something, you ooh and ah, on, I don't get it. You know what I mean? I, I personally, I don't, I don't get it. I don't see it. But these fans, you say this to them, and they get upset. Like I said, last time a fan tried to, you know, confront me about this shit online, I challenged to a basketball game. We do? Well, I gotta play you in basketball. Yeah, because you can't play fucking basketball, can you? Because the culture here in Philadelphia when it comes to basketball is, if you're going to run your mouth, you better back it up. That's always been the culture here. And if people all of a sudden, these big mouths on YouTube, and they want to become personalities, they become fucking stars, and then when you're fucking challenged, and you back down, that tells me a lot about you. You're not real. That's what it means. Okay? So within all this, Philadelphia has looked really bad. I mean, just in general. I mean, the Eagles are winning. The Flyers just blew it against the Penguins. They've been blowing every game for the previous, what, two weeks now? You dominate them all the way up to the, what, to the, the third period, and then you let these guys come back and blow you away. I don't understand it. I don't. It's, it's, it's embarrassing to watch. We already know the state of the Phillies. But once again, this is what I mean every time. Philly fans, this is what I mean. You don't always have to talk about pro sports. You can talk about what's going on in your neighborhood. You can talk about all the sports that's going on. Because you want to know why? If you constantly talk about pro sports, it makes you no different than the fucking radio, which the people that you hate on the radio, you're, you're no better than them. You're no better. You understand that? So for all these guys and all these girls who want to talk sports, I'm an Eagles fan. Well, that don't mean shit to me. I'm a Sixers fan. Well, that shit don't mean nothing to me. Do you play basketball? No, I, I just I just watch. Well, then that means nothing to me. There are men and women here who play very hard. You know what I mean? To earn that respect. It's a community within a community. And for you to just come out of nowhere on Twitter and try to be some smart ass. And just be like, you don't know what you're talking about with basketball. Motherfucker, you don't even play basketball. What the fuck you talking about? You going by what you see on TV and what the fucking media tells you. And that's it. Sheep. And I'm sick of it. Like I said, this is the culture, the new culture, because they're somewhat winning. I can't even say they're somewhat winning because they haven't done shit yet. They don't have a... Yeah. Like I said, again, they'll win. You people get on there and you'll talk and talk and talk about winning. You lose. And then we got more victories. We got silver linings. But then most of you fans don't even say shit. You just get quiet. When they lost last night, I stayed quiet because I knew I was going to do the video today about it. That's why I was just waiting. But you got to be kidding me. And I, even even so, even on Twitter, I still said something to John Clark. So it goes to show you that at this point, these things that you're seeing, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely. Y'all see how much I go after NBC. And like I said, the only reason I, I follow that news network, just like the other networks I used to follow, is because of all the bad shit they say. So I can, I can bury them because they just give me ammo. That's all it is. Because Philadelphia don't know shit about sports. You just saw not too long ago with the Eagles. Ray Dinger tried to say to, um, was it? That Ajay was it was um he was he was upset about not getting enough touches and he came out and said clown media yeah because you can't trust the Philadelphia media they're not they always look they they are so look the reason why Jimmy Rollins said that you know Philadelphia fans are front runners is because they follow the media because the media are front runners one minute they love you as soon as you mess up they will throw you under the fucking bus. But you have to give them a reason to. And it seems like for some reason, with this, at least with the Sixers, they give you every reason under the sun. And they, you know how bad they are. But as soon as they start acting up, for some reason that's a passable offense, you know, we'll just give you a hard pass on that because of how bad you've been in the past. So if someone from the Flyers did that shit, 
Oh no, we gotta throw them under the bus. And someone from the Eagles had an attitude. Oh no, we gotta throw them under the bus. And someone from the Phillies did that. Oh no, we gotta throw them under the fucking bus. But the Sixers, because they've not, they have nothing to lose, it's a different story. If you want to be respected, you have to carry yourself a specific way. And if the athletes are not going to carry themselves a specific way, where Joel Embiid, really, it's really Embiid. I mean, let's be honest here. It's showtime every time. He feels like he's on a stage and he's dancing a jig every time he plays. It's a joke. Simmons got destroyed last night. All right? Was he couldn't defend anyone. He couldn't defend LeBron. He couldn't defend Wade. He couldn't, he's getting destroyed out there. But no one wants to talk about that. No, nobody. No, we're just supposed to be okay with what Kyle Korver said. And yes, the fans, the process. Even though we lost by 20, the fans, yeah, we're cool. It's pandering. Do you not see that? I'm done, man. I really am done. This city has a lot to fucking work on. It does. A lot. And these are the things. Like I said, sports, we're a huge sports town. And they always like to say that. But you can use sports for better things. You can build up your communities. You can, you know what I mean? You can, and oh, and let me tell you something right now. Which, again, I'm going to have to get in contact. We are in almost December now. The cops versus community thing still has not happened because the police have not gotten back to me yet. No matter how many times I contact them. Just to let you know. So, once again, had the facility in Parks and Rec, was all for it. The police said, yeah, we're for it at first, remember? Y'all saw it on Twitter. It's almost December, and still nothing. And every day that goes by, the time ticks and ticks. Do you understand how frustrating that is to have to do all the fucking work? All the legwork, and then they just come in and reap everything. And then when you still do all the legwork, they're still not paying attention. But, you know, they want to say they care about the community. Where are you? Where are you? So what, now I have to go to the precinct and get face-to-face -face with people? Again? If you have passion and you care about this shit, it shouldn't take you long to get together. But for some reason it does. It's amazing how all these fucking problems we have in this fucking city. And yet, when Meek Mill go to jail, we can get Dr. J's ass out there and go and protest. We can't get Dr. J to come up to one of these fucking basketball tournaments, but he can go out there and protest for fucking Meek Mill. Fuck his old ass. I am so sick of this bullshit here. I am. Guy breaks his probation how many fucking times? Fuck him. Alright? He ain't done shit for this city. Oh, he had a turkey drive. You know how many people had a turkey drive here? You know how many people had a turkey drive? Athletes around the city? Especially boxers or even in different states? Every year it happens. You don't get, you don't get, you know, you don't get shit for that. Especially when you're in jail because there's nothing but advertising for you. Fuck you. City got so many fucking problems, but we can't get people together to even address those problems. We can get together and have a rally. Fuck you. Oh, fuck you. I am done. I'll talk to y'all later, man. I'm fucking out.